Hi, welcome to another Italy Vino, where today we're going to be revisiting Italy's favourite sparkling white wine, Prosecco. It's not the first time we've tasted it, but it is the first time that we featured it on Italy Vino since the very best Prosecco was elevated in 2009 to DOCG status, which is the highest ranking that Italian wine can achieve. And uh, I guess really the idea this time is to see whether it deserves this uh, promotion and um, also to compare it perhaps with uh, one or two other uh, alternatives to Prosecco that you can find uh, certainly here in Abruzzo. Now while we open the bottle, which um, could be one of those instances that ends in disaster as it's sprayed Grand Prix style over the camera and the surrounding Abruzzo countryside, um, let me just sort of refresh your memory about, um, about Prosecco. It comes from the Veneto region uh, of northeastern Italy, which is the, uh, the part of Italy uh, around Venice. Um, it, um, that was easy enough. The, um, the very best Prosecco uh, is in a much smaller uh, central region um, called uh, Val d'Obiadeni. Uh, another region to uh, uh, Conegliano, and this is these are the two regions that have been elevated to DOCG status. Now I said this happened in 2009, and these two areas, um, Val d'Obiadeni and uh, Conegliano, were made DOCG wines. Um, the rest of the Prosecco hinterland was enlarged, retained its DOC status, um, and the reason this was done was to give a little bit of um, extra uh, recognition, a little bit of marketing oomph, if you like, to the very best stuff, and to uh, recognise the enormous popularity that Prosecco has worldwide by enlarging the DOC status and make it uh, more saleable, um, because, let's face it, DOC wine attracts a premium. So this is a DOCG wine, a new DOCG wine, a fairly frisky one at that. Um, it's made by um, a winemaker which has really an absolutely irresistible name, um, La Gioiosa e Amorosa, which uh, is not a brand name, it's the actual name of the winery and um, it means joyful and loving. Now who could resist a sparkling wine that is made by a company called Joyful and Loving? Right away with Prosecco, we see that it is a virtually colourless wine. Nice bouquet. Very light, 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 light floral bouquet. And this is a wine that uh, is a multi-layered, multi-purpose wine. If you sit down in any quarter-way decent Italian restaurant, as soon as you sat down, <coughs> excuse me, you'll be given a glass of Prosecco on the house. Uh, it's a great wine for summer drinking on a warm day like this. Its detractors will say it's a wine of zero character. Let's have a taste and find out. Right away, I will say this is absolutely terrific. Um, it is um, allegedly... Uh, extra dry. Uh, not that you would expect a sort of bone dry Prosecco. The, the, the Prosecco grape um, from which, surprise surprise, Prosecco is made uh, is, not, is not a grape that produces absolutely bone bone dry wines. There, there is the tiniest 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 hint of residual sweetness but there is a lemony acidity which is Perfect, perfect, perfect for a hot day like this. Eminently refreshing. No great length of finish whatsoever, but then you'd hardly expect it. Uh, but it's a wine that at only 11% uh, you can drink quite happily. Um, as an aperitif wine or just as a glass of something uh, fizzy and frothy when you fancy giving yourself a little bit of a treat. Um, 
The way Prosecco is made is uh, different to the uh, method by which champagne is made. Um, wine, all wine goes through a first fermentation in which grape juice is turned into wine. Fizzy wine goes through a second fermentation which imparts bubbles. With champagne this uh, process happens actually in the bottle. With Prosecco, um, this process by which the bubbles are added to the wine um, occurs in, in steel vats. Uh, and it's once that process has occurred, it's then bottled. It, it's a slightly, it's a slightly cheaper um, and certainly very different way to uh, the traditional method champenoise. Um, this method of imparting bubbles in a tank is known as the uh, Charmat method, and, and it's very very prevalent in in, in Italy. Um, Asti Spumanti, um, Prosecco, all made by this um, by this steel tank. Um, secondary fermentation method. Um, one other point to note, um, it's made from the Prosecco grape. Uh, as part and parcel of this DOCG revamp, um, Prosecco grapes, confusingly, and I'm not quite sure why they did this, they're no longer known as Prosecco grapes. They're, um, they're now known as Glera, G-L-E-R-A. Why is this? Well, uh, the Prosecco grape, or Glera as it should be known now, is, is an old traditional grape. Glera used to be its, um, uh, its original name, which they've now reverted to. Personally, I think that just builds in unnecessary confusion. Uh, Prosecco grape, Prosecco wine, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But um, on, on, on the newer bottles, you will now find, um, not made from 100% Prosecco, but 100% Glera. So just have that in the back of your mind. If you see Glera on the label, don't think, what am I getting here? It is just another new name for the Prosecco grape. Um, this is not a wine for laying down for years and years and years. You, you drink with the youngest available. Um, as I said, it achieved DOCG status, uh, the best Prosecco, in 2009. So the 2009 wine would have been released in 2010, the 2010, in 2011, and the 2011 in 2012, which is what this bottle of joyful and loving Prosecco is. Now, I said at the start of this review that we would be um, just comparing this with uh, other alternatives that you can get in, in the sparkling wine field. Well, you know, of course, of uh, Asti Spumanti from the, uh, from the Piedmont region. Um, in, as regards Abruzzo, uh, we have reviewed, and highly favourably, uh, our local sparkling wine, which is sparkling pecorino, uh, made from the pecorino grape, which I have to say, for my money, is better, to my preference, than even the uh, top grade um, uh, Prosecco like this is. Um, for my money, the uh, sparkling wine made from the pecorino grape has infinitely more taste and character than the Prosecco grape can, can ever impart. And it, it's purely a matter of personal taste. Um, not leaving aside the fact either that sparkling Prosecco is about half the price that you would pay for a bottle of this. This is about 10 euros and uh, a Val Dobbiadeni DOCG Prosecco, uh, Prosecco about the same. Uh, sparkling um, uh, Pecorino, on the other hand, uh, four, five, six euros a bottle, and for my money is better. If you are in Abruzzo, you will obviously certainly find Prosecco, as you will all over Italy. You will not, you will not find sparkling Pecorino all over Italy, because it is uh, an Abruzzese wine, and not made in particularly large quantities, but uh, give yourselves a treat, buy a bottle of each, and enjoy your, uh, your own private tasting. So, Time to rate this. Well, it is such a vice-free and good-natured wine that it would be a little bit churlish to start criticising it. But for me, it is just that tiny, tiny bit bland. Uh, you have a mouthful, delightful, and then what? Well, not a lot, to be quite honest. So I'm going to give this seven and a half out of ten. Um, 
it would be higher if it just had that little bit, a little bit more subtlety, a little bit more class, if uh, if you like, for want of a better word. But uh, don't get me wrong, it is a terrific wine. If you try it, you're certainly not going to be disappointed. So while a car disappears into the distance behind me, as you could probably hear, um, we will call an end to this particular edition of uh, Italy Vino. One of our guests at Villas for Two going out for lunch. How nice. Um, beautiful day for it. Um, seven and a half out of ten. Worth a punt, as the saying goes. Uh, thank you, as always, for watching. We will see you uh, again next time around. Uh, for the time being, though, I raise a glass and toast you. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye for now. Thank you.